Hello, I'm Sandra Stanette, and I teach medical statistics to third-year medical students at Duke University using team-based learning. TBL is relatively new in medical education and virtually unexplored for courses in medical statistics. In many ways, it's similar to a discussion in a journal club in which physicians critically review the literature on a particular topic. They try to decide whether they can apply the results of studies to their own patients. In this collaborative atmosphere, they learn from each other in the discussion, as they do in TBL. Let's listen to some students in a group readiness assurance test involving sample size and power. You could have more power out of your sample size. Yeah, but I mean, you also want to know beforehand whether you're going to have enough power. Like, if it's not power, higher power, no, to I agree, but but I'm just saying that B technically, I mean, like, I don't, I don't see why yeah, I left. it could be wrong because if you do get a like a more precise test, right, and your standard deviation goes down, then your power, your power. But how would you decrease the variability in most cases? That's the one thing I did a better test. But I still put D. <laughs> After all of that, that's what I'm going to argue Bam, point, right. and then I agree with you. I didn't, I didn't. That's just my logic behind D. I, I kind of see what you're saying with C, but. Ah, yeah. oh, 100%, baby. Yes. It's not completely meaningless. I mean, if you go for a primary outcome, you might be powered to get an actual answer there, and then your secondary, tertiary, other outcomes might be able to tell you where studies need to look in the future. Our application exercise is open book, and the students use the course notes, the internet, and whatever they need to answer the questions. This is how they will work in real life in a medical environment. The application exercises require thought and discussion. Some questions require the use of a software package to answer the questions by analyzing the data. The questions progress in difficulty and interpretation as sort of a guided analysis. Listen to students working on a sample size calculation. Right. Mm -hmm. So using that same technique, we compare the proportion of 0.75 or 0.95, but this a different drug, but they're using the same exact technique, so they want to know how big their sample size needs to be in the second drug trial. So you've got to compare their statistics. You gotta ignore the first company of 87% using macogen, and you just compare it in the 75 to the 95, and you're asking yourself how big is the sample size. You already know the power of 0.8. So once we enter that, you get 48. Students are enthusiastic and engrossed in the problem solving. The buzz in the room demonstrates the level of participation. When students apply their knowledge of statistics in a real situation, we have accomplished our objective. Students report that they are less threatened by this approach and that they also learn from their peers. It also models the way in which they will discuss care for their patients in the future. And as some students say, it's also fun. You guys are having too much fun. Okay, we're sorry. We'll stop. <laughs> we're always having fun. It's okay. <laughs> That's what makes everything so good to us. The fun in it makes you happy. I'm happy taking the course. <laughs> I am. Especially since we do it in groups, that's always the best part. Because then you can discuss things. Because when I do things alone, I'm always lost.